if a born again Christian sins against God, what happens to him? Okay. Is that the same thing you got? Okay. Um, first John, first epistle of St. John. Chapter 2. We'll read from verse 1. First John chapter 2 from verse 1. Read. Verse 2. Did you see that? So, he says, I have written to you so that you should not sin. Then he says, but if any man sin, we have a lawyer a defense lawyer. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ is our advocate with the Father. Notice it says advocate with the Father. That means the advocate is on the Father's side. The advocate is not arguing to God. He's arguing on God's side. Okay? So God is with us. He is for us. He says, I've written to you so that you don't sin. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he's the propitiation for our sins. And not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So if a Christian sins, he needs to obtain forgiveness from God. Did you notice what I said? He needs to obtain forgiveness. He should receive forgiveness. Can we read, can we read again what it says? I want you to notice clearly what it does not say. He says, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Now, go to chapter 1, the same book, 1 John chapter 1. And I want you to look at verse 9. Read verse 9. That's wonderful. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when a Christian sins, we direct him to this scripture so that he can obtain forgiveness and be cleansed. He should not remain in his sin. He should confess to the Lord his sin and receive forgiveness. Say, Lord, I sinned against you. What I did was wrong. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, I receive forgiveness. Don't ask him for forgiveness. You know why I said don't ask? Receive forgiveness. Because if you're asking, when will he give it? Did you hear me? When will he give it? 
because he already did. He already planned it out. He already made it available. What you're supposed to do is to take it. Amen. Amen. That's what you do. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting for when he says, I have forgiven you. And he's not going to say that because his word already told you about forgiveness in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Just in case you, you're going to be helping other people answer that question, let me give you a scripture from, from the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4. Look at verse 16. Read what it says. Did you see it? That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Wish I had time to explain that. But that part of the mercy is what I want you to notice. Did he say ask for mercy? Did he say come to the throne of grace and ask for mercy? He says obtain mercy. Obtain mercy. So you come before the Lord and obtain mercy. So you say, Father, I receive mercy from you in the name of Jesus. And I thank you. Don't ask. Receive. Don't ask. People who pray, oh God, please save me. Oh God, please save me. They're not going to get saved. Because they were already saved. And you can also, oh, give me the Holy Spirit of God. Give me the Holy Spirit of God. You can pray like that for 10 years. You're not going to get an answer. See, you say, I receive the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Everything that God has already given, don't ask. Receive. That's the difference. Don't ask, receive. That is the meaning of gospel. Can you see it? When Jesus told us to go preach the gospel, that's what he told us to go and tell the people. Tell them it's goodwill towards men. Tell them God has given everything for salvation. All they have to do is take it. Hallelujah. That is good news. That's gospel. Share that message. You'll be amazed at how the Holy Spirit will bless that message for you. Because that is the truth of the gospel. You know, um, every human being generally will crawl before walking huh? and before running. So that's why where we read in, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, he says, if any man sin, he didn't say when any man sin. He said, if, because you don't have to sin. You see, that's what it says, if. Because as you grow in your Christian life, certainly you learn to walk in righteousness. You learn to walk as the Bible says, even as he walked. You see, but that's why you have to understand the concept of sin. Understand the concept of sin, the concept of righteousness. When you understand that, it becomes clear to you. For example, there are people who think, as long as you are in this physical body, you must sin. It's not true. That's not the, that's not the right teaching of the Bible. You see, that's not the right teaching of the Bible. So do you come to a place of sinlessness? It is not a place of sinlessness. It is a place of maturity in God. It is a place of walking in his righteousness. It's called the dominion of righteousness. 
it is greater than a place of sinlessness. See, as long as you are thinking of sinlessness, you are sin conscious. You think righteousness. Light and darkness don't fight. You get it? Light and darkness don't fight. Every time you turn on the light, darkness disappears. So every time you walk in righteousness, what happens to sin? Sin is nowhere. How often should you walk in righteousness? Always. The Bible says if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. What does that mean? Does that mean that we are sinning? No. What it means is this. In the earth, and this is where uh, those who talk about the earthly, continual, or permanent sin, this is where they miss it. In the earth, we are constantly bombarded by sin and unrighteousness in the very air about us. And the language that we even use is imperfect for the God type of communication. That's why he gave us the spiritual language of speaking in tongues. So that the Holy Spirit can give us the vocabulary to communicate with the Holy God. Our choice of words in our earthly language isn't good enough. Such that our continual communication is so imperfect, it doesn't work the righteousness of God. That's why he says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Then automatically, the blood of Jesus Christ's son cleanses us from our sin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. So you don't have to be sin conscious, but righteousness conscious. Glory to God. Amen.